my beautiful lovelies it's emmy how are you it's great to see you and welcome back to my kitchen today i'm going to be making a cake in a cold oven that's right no preheating at all we're going to be putting our mixed batter into a cold oven and then turn it on and then bake our cake and see what happens based on the reading i've read the cake is supposed to turn out marvelously and there's actually a logic behind this method now according to cheryl day in her book a treasury of southern baking this recipe came from manufacturers of gas ovens they were trying to encourage cooks to give up their wood burning stoves which took a long time to stoke and to get to a perfect temperature by promoting this idea of putting a cake into or the cake batter into a cold oven turning it on and then letting the oven bake the cake in a cold oven eventually yielding a beautiful cake without heating up your entire house so if we follow cheryl's timeline that means recipes using cold ovens were about 100 years old but i first read about it in this lovely book edna lewis's in pursuit of flavor and she has a recipe for a pound cake that i really want to make that's called black walnut pound cake i've been wanting to make this for a long time but we are completely out of black walnuts we have a black walnut tree and i've done many things with the black walnut fruits that we get from the tree i'll put a link down below to dying with it to making ice cream with it a lot kinds of wonderful things but i have not yet made a pound cake but this pound cake recipe also is baked in a cold oven i have never cooked a cake in a cold oven although i did bake <laughs> I think it was a tombstone pizza when I was quite young. I was so proud of myself to bake a pizza at home. We didn't eat pizza much, but this was a frozen pizza. And I baked it in an oven that wasn't preheated and it was terrible, but that lesson stuck with me. And I've always remembered to preheat ovens since then except this time, but this time it's totally 100% intentional. And big thanks to all of my lovelies who got in touch with me via social media, suggesting I make this recipe. A lot of you saw B. Dylan Hollis's video on cold oven cake. So big thanks to all of you for suggesting it. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. This cake is going to be baked in a bunt pan. A bunt pan is this style of pan. You can also use a tube pan. And I've had this pan for a long time. I picked it up at the thrift store years and years and years ago. Bunt pans have this signature patterning in here and they are notorious for having cakes stick to them. I'm going to be trying something new. Ever since I heard about it, I wanted to test it, particularly on a bunt cake mold. And it's for Nancy Birth Whistles lining paste it's just a one to one to one ratio of shortening oil and flour i'm using a hand mixer if you don't have one you could easily do this with a whisk but first cream up the shortening i'm using half a cup and then add equal amounts of flour whisk that together and then drizzle in your oil i'm using sunflower oil but any neutral flavored oil will work nancy also says that you can use butter instead of shortening and gluten-free flour instead of regular all-purpose flour. Then you can save this paste in a jar in the refrigerator. And now I'm just going to liberally brush this in side of my pan. So pan prepared. Now let's go ahead and make our batter. First thing we're gonna need is a stand mixer. You actually don't need a stand mixer. You could definitely make this in a bowl with a whisk. It's just gonna require a little bit more vigorous action upon your part three sticks of butter that is a cup and a half <laughs> it's gonna be good so all of this butter has been sitting at room temperature have you ever made butter from scratch i remember doing it for the first time as a preschooler in a little baby food jar we had to like shake the jar of cream around I'm like what is the purpose of this crazy thing we're doing it did make something solid. It didn't taste anything, in my opinion, to butter at the time because I was used to eating margarine. I'm like, what is this? They put it on saltine crackers, I remember. I'm like, this isn't good. But I made it as an adult and it was quite good. <laughs> I'll put a link down to that video in case you missed that. I'm going to beat this on medium speed and scraping down the bowl at a couple intervals. We're going to beat this for about two to three minutes until everything is light and fluffy and pale in color. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I plugged it in. I just forgot to turn on the power strip. Safety first. Safety first.
Okay, so now that our butter is really light and fluffy in texture, look at that, it's almost white in color. We're gonna just put this on medium low speed and gradually add the sugar in. Once all the sugar is incorporated, we're going to beat it on medium, medium high speed for another couple of minutes until everything is light and fluffy. Now we're going to add six eggs. This is going to add richness, of course, and help with some leavening. We're going to do this one at a time and incorporating well in between each addition of egg. These eggs are also at room temperature. The eggs will also give a nice sunny color to the cake as well. And the reason why we're not adding all the eggs at one time is that this is a very thick mixture and as we're adding the eggs are very loose and watery and so it'll be harder to combine them so if you just do them incrementally one at a time it's much easier to incorporate mm -hmm. going to add our flour which also has a teaspoon of baking powder and a little bit of salt in there as well and we're going to alternate between this and our milk and one bloop two official bloops of vanilla <laughs> so we're going to add this in three batches the flour and then we're going to alternate with the milk and when adding flour go slowly so that it doesn't explode everywhere mm -hmm. here we go add some milk Forgot to mention that I'm actually using light cream instead of milk. Okay. Alrighty, I'm back with the prepared pan. Our batter is complete. Oof, wow, that's heavy. And then before we pour it into our pan, I like to give the batter a couple of stirs by hand, making sure I get all the way to the very bottom of the bowl. Now the rationale behind baking a cake in a cold oven is not only to keep your house cool, but it's also supposed to benefit the cake as well. It's supposed to develop this really great, almost crisp golden crust. And the long baking time allows the baking powder to react and allow for a nice tall rise. Now here's the nutsy part. We're going to place this in our completely cold oven. Set it for 325 degrees and bake it for 60 to 70 minutes or until a toothpick poked into the center comes out clean. I'm going to let it cool on a rack for 20 minutes before we invert it and then allow it to cool before we slice into it and taste this beautiful cold oven cake. All right, lovelies, I'll see you in a little bit when this cake is all finished. All right, bye. back and here is the beautiful cold oven cake it looks great I did have a little bit of sticking I baked it for about 62 minutes but all in all it looks spectacular what I really like is that the cake filled the pan entirely so I have a really full cake Nancy's lining paste allowed for these little crevices where I usually have sticking here those turned out fine you can actually see a little bit of the lining paste right there and right here. It's kind of a pale color. Give me your tips about how you perfectly unmold your bunt cakes. I'm all ears. And now to just gildedly and to make it look even lovelier, we're gonna dust it with a little bit of powdered sugar. And that will, I think, hide some of those imperfections. Oh, so lovely. It reminds me of Christmas. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Hmm. Look at this gorgeous cake. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Powder sugar it up, covers up all your little imperfections. Love it. So stinking gorgeous. Look how tall that cake is. Beautiful. Alrighty, let's go ahead and give this a slice. Okay. Ooh, it slices nicely, has a little bit of a crust. Hear that? Here we go. Boom, look at that. 
so gorgeous. Look at that crumb. It's yellow perfection. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's perfect. It's so stinking perfect. So beautiful. It's like a little gumdrop. Oh, I've never made such a perfect slice of bundt cake before. I'm so happy. Alrighty, here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm, so rich and buttery, kissed with vanilla, and it has a little bit of a crumb on the outside, a little bit of a crust, but it's not firm. It's just a crust. And the flavor of the cake is marvelous. It's so buttery and sweet, but it doesn't feel or taste dense. It's still light. Mmm. You know, it has me thinking of when I was a kid, my mom would buy Sara Lee pound cakes in the frozen food section. And my favorite part, besides the cake itself, was this little bit of parchment paper on the top of the Sara Lee pound cake. And it had little dotted lines to show you a portion. I loved peeling that back and cutting those perfect little portions of pound cake. And then, of course, I loved eating the cake itself, which was buttery and rich. This is what that pound cake wants to be. This is utter perfection. It is so good. Mm -hmm. It has the density of a pound cake. It has a nice sponge kind of bounce to it and density, yet it remains light and airy, buttery. So good. Mm. This part right here, this was the top of the cake. When we baked it in the pan. This part's my favorite. The edge is like a cookie. It's like a sugar cookie. It gets crispy, but it's sweet and vanilla and buttery. Mmm, this is the best pound cake I've ever made. It might be the best pound cake I've ever eaten. All right, my lovelies. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Love hearing from you. I get so many wonderful suggestions. Like this video, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.